Good morning. This is Michelle Wald, and I am here for Stand Up to Gravity. As the year begins, I would like to go back to some foundation work, the foundation of the feet. So the feet are what is in contact with the ground or any other surface that we have them on, up the wall or, you know, and we really, uh, I feel like the feet have been neglected in a lot of ways. So I would like to start this year working on the feet. So I don't know if you know this, but there are 26 bones in your feet and they all have to coordinate to really have a great walk. Meaning when your foot hits the ground, usually it's the heel first. I've got Flocka here. So like 26 bones here in, in the feet. All right. So when we walk, a lot of times we think about reaching our foot forward, but really if you think about moving your body forward over your foot, that involves the ankles and the feet. And as your body moves forward over your feet, we get what's called a push off. So when your foot is back here and you're uh, propelling yourself forward and then relaxing the foot to step, versus reaching out. So what that does is it sort of gives you the opportunity to have a work, meaning the stance phase and the push off and a swing phase, the rest phase. So as your leg is swinging, we don't necessarily have to have it effortful. So having the slice relaxed swing can improve the quality of your walk and improve the functioning of your foot and ankle. So we'll be working all around this, some familiar moves with the different focus, okay? So I hope you enjoy this class. Let me know if you do and give me a comment if you have a comment uh, and requests, I take requests. You can put them in the comments as well. All right, just to let you know, we're, we're gonna, um, there's gonna be some changes soon. So stay tuned and I hope you stick with me to keep get this year uh, started off right, nice and flexible and fit. All right. So go ahead and start again with your feet on the floor. Take a breath. And feel as you are exhaling, you have like a sensation of heaviness. I want you to feel gravity down into your feet. Feel how your feet have a weight bearing surface. There's a front of your foot and then there's the back of your foot. There's the inside of your foot and the outside of your foot. And now I'd like you to sway forward and back. So see if you can, um, See if you could really feel, you know, your weight on the heels and really feel the weight on the balls of your foot and see if that can come from hinging at the ankle. A lot of times we do it by just moving our pelvis forward and back, but I want you to really get a sense of the whole body moving forward and back and your toes might start to come up. So don't go any further because <laughs> that's about it. So. And you'll notice like where our leg attaches, the foot is actually on the back third. So the middle of your foot is actually right about where the ankle crease is in the front of the ankle crease. So think about moving across that area. So now I'm gonna have you weight shift from one side, push into the ground and come to the other side. Feel gravity, push down to lengthen up, transfer your weight over and then feel gravity. You can soften your knee a little bit, soften your ankle. You'll feel the weight shift forward or more to the whole foot. So as we're starting, you might have a, a sense of where the weight bearing is on your feet. So just like where's familiar, right? And there's nothing wrong here. Just finding where you typically go. Do you feel it on the inside of your foot or the outside of your foot? You may have a propensity to twist your ankle. Most people that twist their ankle have like a high arch. So they're toppling, you know, her ankle is twisting out that way. 
and you may have instability. If you have tight calves, you might be stabilizing at your calf to hold yourself up. One of the things that I discovered for myself is that my calves were so tight, it was just pulling me down because they had so much wrapping because I, I, I did a lot of cycling and a lot of exercises to, <laughs> to tone that. So it was interesting as my body let go. So I can keep weight shifting side to side. And I want you to bring awareness of this. This could be done at any time. If you're sitting in a, or standing in a line doo -doo -doo, at the store, the weight shifting side to side, letting the knee soften just a little bit. And when I mean soften, I mean just like barely. So I'm letting the ankle hinge and then the knee softens just a little bit as you shift your weight. So now stay on one side and then draw one foot back behind you, kind of on railroad tracks, not in a line, but on railroad tracks. And then just put the ball, the toes down and then weight shift back. Find a stance that, uh, as far as the depth of the stance that you could easily shift forward onto the front foot and then back onto the back foot. Forward and just feel what it feels like. If you feel a little like, whoa, I don't do it like that. Then you might find this exercise very helpful. So shifting the weight forward, pausing, finding your balance, and then shifting your weight back, pausing, finding your balance. So as the back foot uh, comes forward on the ball of the foot, the heel rises up and come back. Steps together and then back with the other foot. We're just getting an inventory here. Push off, come to the front foot, find your balance. If you need to hold onto a chair or something, go ahead. Uh, but don't, don't just have it there for balance sake. Don't like depend on it so much because we're we are working on our balance. So weight shift forward and back. Find the amount of distance between your feet that feels like, oh yeah, I can do that. And really put in the pauses so that your feet get a sense of supporting your whole body weight here. Now. This is going to give you some information. And one of the things that we need to be able to do is balance on one foot. And this is why I'm starting with this exercise. So if you've got your phone, go ahead and grab your phone or some sort of timer. The timer will give you a sense of like how, how many seconds that you could stand on one foot. We're going to get a little bit of a, some information here. So go ahead and do the stopwatch and then I'm going to have you do that same position, weight transfer onto one foot and start the stopwatch and see how many seconds that you can balance on one foot. Try not to look around a lot. Try to find a point on the wall or slightly forward and down on the floor, not down at your feet, but see how many seconds you got. You might find a little wobble. And that wobble is your body and your ankle really working to keep your balance. So the gold standard, so that was 30 seconds. So the gold standard is 30 seconds. So if you've got 30 seconds, you're doing great. If you're a dancer, you probably can do this. But if you find yourself off balance easily, this is a great exercise to do. Just stand on one leg. You could do it anytime. So let's do the other foot. So go ahead and weight transfer on to the uh, other foot and start your stopwatch. See what you got. Feel like this one might be a little different from the other one. The other side might feel one way and this is like, what is totally different? Well, the two sides are different. We are not um, totally symmetrical, though we are in balance. Our body is always trying to find balance. So this is what you, uh, could work on for your balance. If you find that you don't have good balance, then work on it. Okay, so that was 30 seconds on that side. So if you've got 30 seconds, good job. And if you don't, I would practice this move often. See if you could practice every day for 30 days. I guarantee you're going to get a, a 30 seconds and a minute would be even better, right? Okay, so let's work on some flexibility. 
So we're going to take that lunge position and take it a little further, just so you feel like your heel is barely getting down to the floor, bending the front leg and then squaring off the hips towards the front leg. And you can do that by putting your hands on your pelvis and turning to the side. I'm going to have you lean over the front leg so we can get a nice stretch in the back. Go ahead and raise your arms up so you're all in a line. Take a breath. And then push off that back foot to raise the heel up and reach, reach, reach with the arms. Lower the heels down and push off the ball of your foot. Reach, reach, reach. And slowly lower down. Let's do a few more. Reach with the arms, tighten the tummy, use the glutes, push out the ball of the foot, lengthen out. Make sure the back of your neck is long too. Lower down and soften on the way down. Kind of let gravity have you push off again. Take a breath, exhale. And lower down, lower your arms. Shake them out and bring your feet together. Now we're doing the other side. Find your balance, reach the leg out, reach it a little further back and then lower the heel just where it starts to barely be able to reach. Square off the pelvis, get the nice uh, abs in, in, in tight. Make sure your foot, knee and hip are all in a line here. So this, you wanna take a bird's eye view, just look down. Make sure the knee is landing right in the middle of your foot. All right, swing the arms up, soften, lengthen, and then press off that back foot. Yow. And lower down slowly. Soften the arms, restart, really pull in the belly. You can shrug the shoulders up, drop the shoulders down, straighten those elbows and soften again. Lengthen, lengthen the back of your neck. Reach to the arms, long, long, long. Lower down, soften the arms, come back up. Do a few more of these. You're not causing any pain. You might feel a stretch in the ankle. You might feel a stretch in the, in the toes and reach forward and come together. All right, so, if you notice that your toes have been gripping the floor, that's one of the things that we're gonna address <laughs> because if your toes are gripping, you're not having as much stability and there's a, too much tone in your feet. So I want you to make sure that you, you have like kind of relaxed toes, let your toes sort of spread out. And if they are gripping, likely your body position is the culprit. So play around with shifting your body weight forward so that your toes can just soften and relax. And, you know, they will start to work for you, but you just don't want them like all crunched up because then you might get some hammer toes. So you don't want that. All right. Let's do a little shaking out. So shake out your foot. So we've been working on balancing on one foot, shake it to the side. This perturbation actually <laughs> makes it a little harder to balance and shake it to the back. But it is a good practice. So this little crossing over one, oh my goodness. That's the hard one. Shake it side, shake it forward and other side. Find your balance first. If you try to find your balance as you're moving, it's much harder. So one of the misconceptions people have is that they need to find their balance as they're going. Obviously, if you're walking a tightrope, that's true. But finding it step by step, meaning I'm standing on this leg to move this leg and shake it about. Finding my balance first and then shaking it about and to the back and across. See if you can get that foot nice and floppy. See if you calf can let go. Calf and foot and floppy floppy. All right. Go ahead and we're going to take this lunge position here, but just so you could just flip the toes over. So put it back far enough that you could just kind of relax the knee and flip the toes and then rock in and out. 
If you're on a hard floor like me, you might want a yoga mat or something. Kind of used to it. And now go ahead and other side. Toes back, flip the toes down. You might just stay here to find a bit of a stretch and then circle round and nice and easy. Okay, so do that one more time on each side. So nice and easy circles. So you just got the, this one here. And now if you let your ankle drop in and out, here you're gonna stretch on the inside. And then out, you're going to stretch like a twisted ankle kind of position, but a circular in a circle. So as you're doing that, you're going to feel things loosen up a little bit. So let your toes be mobile and kind of stretch. Don't force anything because this leg is unweighted. And then come to the center. And now compare your feet. Compare your shins. How does that feel? This exercise can be groundbreaking if you tend to have tight ankles and shins, super helpful for shin splints. So I invite you to try it out and it's gentle. So you got your toes down and then you're just going to kind of wobble it in and out and then gradually go into a circular motion. <sighs> this leg is sort of hanging out of the joint, out of the socket. And as it hangs out of the socket, then the shin and ankle can be looser. So the side is like working like crazy and then circle the other way. If you need to hold on to a chair, go ahead. And if you're working on your balance, this is a great balance exercise. Okay, shake the standing leg out, shake the other leg out. Super nice. All right. So let's work on a little bit of mobility. Okay. So you have a few options for like the intensity. So just to let you know, you can do some of these sitting in a chair. So we're just going to be doing heel raises. Actually, everybody sit down kind of on the edge of the seat. Make sure your thighs are free. And if you point your toes, so you're up on the tippy tip of your toes. So up and heels down and heels down. So this is kind of the easiest one. You can alternate side to side. And this really strengthens the big toe muscle. It's unweighted, so it's very safe. <clears throat> and if you have a foot problems, this will quickly make your feet stronger in the pointers. And then Reach your foot out so you're pulling your toes back towards your nose. Spread your toes wide. And this is a great exercise if you really keep your trunk up tall. A lot of times when we straighten our leg, we round. If you push off your seat and come up tall and then stretch your foot out and then point and flex big. Point and spread those toes. And your thigh muscle is working strongly. If you don't feel your thigh muscle working, get that muscle working. Get the thigh working. Okay, the other side, point and flex. Spread those toes. If they don't spread, I've got another exercise for you in a second. We have a good one from my good friend, Dr. Deb. Okay, and now let's do some circles. So these are more active circles. So really feel like you're working your muscles. So, and work as much as you can for your body and go around the other side, really stretch every little bit of the corner of your ankle as you go around, spreading and curling the toes so they're active and participating. A lot of times we go around with our foot just like it's kind of dead. So we want it to be active in all the things that we do, just not gripping overly, right? So curl and spread the toes one way. Make sure you're up tall. You could push off the chair if you're finding it difficult to hold yourself up. Really be working your whole body here. <sighs> Your thigh is working, your ankle is working, you're rounding, you're 
ankle in and down and out and spread those toes in and out and spread and curl. Okay, did we go the other way? I think we did. All right. So, and now just feel, so the thighs should be warming up a little bit. The calves should be warming up a little bit. If, um, and the next one, we're gonna use the hip hinge. We're gonna tone the core a little bit just so we can get a sense of that. So as usual, we want the core in the optimal position. So finding the optimal position and posture through Aston arcing. So roll your pelvis back. Rounding, stay over your pelvis, pushing off the thighs, looking up, settling in the middle. Rounding. And everything's rounding in a similar amount as best you can. Push off your thighs, inhale, find that center. This is a, a toned neutral, meaning I'm pushing off my feet and my seat to kind of keep upright. Go ahead and reach your arms up. And what we're going to do is hinge forward and hinge just a little bit back. Hinge forward like you're sliding on a table here. And as you uh, go ahead and put one foot a little bit back so your hinge is supported more. So hinge forward and back. When you go back, you should feel your tummy muscles work. Don't collapse. Keep nice and tall. Reach forward and back. Inhale, exhale, pulling in strongly in the belly. Put your hand there so you can feel it working. And your back should be okay with this because you're not really using your back. Your back is just holding straight and you're hinging at the hips. So reach forward and back. And if it is getting, uh, if you are feeling something likely, it's because your back is weak. So this will strengthen it up, pull your belly in, Hinge forward and back, forward and back. And as you come back, you're pushing off that front foot. <sighs> Keep your shoulders uh, plugged in, not too far back, but like right at the sides. And we're really working the hip hinge here. If you're unfamiliar with the hip hinge, stick around because I do it a lot. I think it's one of the most over, <laughs> One of the uh, most, I'd say, overlooked <laughs> movements that we tend to, um, that tends to put us really at a disadvantage and creates back pain. Because if every motion we do is back bending, you know, bending our spine instead of these big hip joints, you're going to have your back wear out. I'm sure you know someone with back pain. All right, so now go ahead and we're gonna tilt our knees side to side so that we actually tilt onto the inside of one foot and outside the other foot and try to keep your feet going with your knees. Feet with the knees. Okay. And so tilting, tilting. And this is kind of warming up the hip joints too, yeah? So you're gonna run your heel up one shin, up like so, and then up the other shin. This motion, there's three, four, five, six, gets the hip external rotators. And it's amazing how strong we can get in our hips by doing this exercise. So nice and tall, you can hold onto the chair if you feel like your posture wants to curl down as you lift. So you're keeping everything pretty level and just running that heel up the shin and down the shin. You will soon feel the hip joint working. All right, so waggle them in and out. All right, now lift up one leg and you can do that same motion. And if this is difficult, just lean back a little bit, grab your shin and cross your ankle all the way over your knee. All right, so this position is called the figure four in sitting. Oftentimes we do this in laying down and then you, you hug your towards your 
thigh this way. I'm going to show you the sitting version. I like to warm up the hip even further. So go ahead and start at the hip, run your hand down your thigh into the shin. And if you notice, the shin might be a little tight. So go ahead and roll the ankle a little bit and just do a little bit of massage of the shin. Like just work, you know, kind of grab the muscle, and give it a little hug all the way up the side of the thigh. Just kind of grab and pull, give a little squeeze one more time. And just notice, oh, look, my knee kind of came down some. All right, so make sure the, the ankle bone is across the knee, across the thigh. And you're going to flex that foot. And what we're going to do is do a little jiggle. So you're going to raise the knee up and then let it go down. See how it's kind of wobbling a little bit here? I'm not forcing it down. Oftentimes we just get into the forcing. And I'm wanting to try you to try this experiment of loosening it first. So loosen, loosen it, let it, let it bounce and jiggle a little bit. And instead of pushing it down, you're actually lifting it up and letting gravity bring it down. And just find where your body feels like it can let go a little bit. You can be leaning back a little bit here if your hips are exceptionally tight, but I think you can do it. All right, so once, once it's loosened up a little bit, then you can draw that knee down and then you can lean your body forward over the foot that's on the ground. Nice and tall and then round, push off the foot, nice and tall, hinge, then round. Notice I always do that sequence, lengthen out, hinge your hip first, and then round your spine. So it's not like I'm saying don't round your spine. It could be a nice stretch, but the sequence is the important thing. So really try this sequence, lengthen, hinge forward, and then round the spine. You'll feel a nice uh, stretch in this hip. So as you come up, you're going to do that jiggle jiggle again. Lift it up and let it bounce down. And then just check it out. I think my other one's jealous. What about you? So you're going to run that heel right up the shin. Land your ankle over the knee. So your ankle bone is past the knee. And just check what the range is first, right? Check what the range is. And that's your starting point. Then do this little bouncy thing. And as you bounce, it starts to loosen up. You could also do a little bit of massage. I'm moving my hand up towards my hip and down towards my knee as I'm lifting and letting it drop down. That helps the muscles relax. If you have IT band tightness or knee tightness or hip tightness, give it a little love. Put your hands just right on it and move the skin around. All right, let's uh, work on the shin a little bit. You can just kind of reach and pull toward you. Oftentimes the shins are tight if you have shin splints or any kind of ankle problem. Oftentimes the shins are super tight. So giving them a little bit of love in this position puts it on a little bit of stretch and you'll get a nice benefit of looser ankles when it comes in. You can work the back of the calf with your thumbs as you do this and just give a little squeeze, kind of trace along the bones, little kitty fingers, little like kind of kneading motions right along the shin. Don't cause any pain, please. All right, so now we're gonna bounce. Ooh, da bound. And see if that can get a little bit more motion. This feels freer to me. Ah, okay, and now stretch it down. Oh, look how much further I went. All right, so stretch it down, lengthen the trunk up, hinge forward. That should intensify the stretch in the hip. Take a breath, exhale, round. You should be looking right at your foot on the floor. Push off that foot, lengthen your spine again, come back to center. 
lengthen and hinge, fold over, lengthen and come up. And one more time, lengthen, hinge over this leg and lean, let your head go. Push off to come up and slide that foot off and give it a little swing. All right. So even though we're not working the ankles so much as, as, as that one, the hips and the knees and the ankles are all part of the kinetic chain that help you do a lot of functional exercises like squats and lunges and anything that you're reaching down. If your hips aren't fully flexible, if you're not fully using the range of your knees, the ankles actually take all the brunt of that. So we want to be able to have the sense of coordination between all our joints. When one area of your body is hurting or not working right, we tend to focus on that. But really enrolling other parts of your body to work properly is going to be the thing that makes the biggest difference. So Remember, we have to take it all in stride and, and really think that all our whole body is connected. Okay, so let's come on up. And just like I said, it's all connected. To do a motion like a squat actually takes ankle mobility. And if you don't have ankle mobility, that will be your downfall in your ability to squat, okay? So we're gonna work on the squat a little bit. Go ahead and hold the back of a chair if you need to, or just reach your arms out and lower your hips back and down. You're really working on a deeper hip hinge now. If you find that this is difficult because of ankle tightness, take your towel, give it a couple rolls so it's like a, a small roll, and you can put it under your heels. If you put it under your heels, it'll give some slack up the chain and you might find it a little easier. Oh, let's work those squats and push off the heels coming up tall. Really make sure your abs are engaged, pulling down, pushing, lengthening your spine. When I was working out with my trainer the other day, we actually had a, she had a wedge, a pretty big wedge. And I found it's actually, it was helpful to even be able to do a full squat. So try the full squat if it feels safe for you. And then try it with a towel roll and see if that can't be a full mobility. Just doing this kind of mobility is very helpful. You can hold on to something. You can rock forward and back. And if your heels come up, that's okay. You can work on coming forward and lifting your heels up and then dropping your heels down and then resting. That's a good way to increase the mobility of your ankles. Okay, or you could just hang out here or just abandon the whole thing and just work on getting your ankle mobility in just a regular squat motion like so. I actually had an argument with the trainer about this because he wanted my shins to be vertical as I was squatting and I'm like, I can't do that without actually falling over. So your knees actually do in a full squat, you know, most cultures have this squatting position, like historically we have the ability to squat like uh, by the campfire, this is the original chair. So without having to sit on the ground. So because we're Americans, we don't have many opportunities to squat unless you are a yogi and uh, have been doing that a while, like I have. My 82 year old mother can squat just at the drop of a hat because she does that every single day. So it's just one of those motions that are really important in coordinating the whole body, okay? So my mom, she squats while gardening. 
And so we were, we were at a, a family reunion and I was talking about this idea that Americans don't squat because just we don't do it. Kids don't do it. Teenagers don't do it. Adults don't do it. So we've lost that ability. And it's actually been found the cultures who do that full squat motion don't have hip, back, or knee issues. So it's not something that you can gain overnight, especially if you're inflexible, but it's something to work towards. Rolling up a, a blanket even if you have very tight ankles and practicing lowering down on a regular basis can be a way to really improve the mobility of your ankles. So that being said, keep working on it. The next thing we're going to do is work on our strength. So being able to raise your heels and lower down smoothly, we want to be able to do 20 reps, actually on one foot. So this is a good one to measure. So if you've got your timer, go ahead and set your timer. We'll set our timer for one minute, one minute and see how many heel raises you can do in one minute. So that's a great way to uh, keep track. So let's go ahead and start the one minute and you're gonna raise and lower. You're not pushing off the chair. You wanna make sure your ankles are nice and aligned. They're not going out or in. Halfway through. Okay, I got 46. How many did you get? That was a good one. So I want to shake them out again. Shaking out one leg, shaking out the other leg. Let's do a quick stretch. And if you do this pumping action with the uh, lunge stretch, you will find the fibers get more slide. So you and, and start to let go of any cramping that may happen have been happening. So other side, raise and lower. A lot of times we tend to be told these static stretches are the way to go, but in the warm up, you really want to have more of a dynamic stretch. And then after your exercise, you can do a, a few more static stretches. But even then I find Adding a little dynamics to your stretches can make a really big difference in your flexibility overall. So hang on to those static stretches at the end of your workout, not at the beginning. All right, let's work on the single leg. So you're gonna transfer your weight onto one foot, use the chair or something to hang on to, and you're gonna raise and lower. You might be a little pooped here, so we're just going to count how many. If you want to jot down your numbers, that's a great place to start and look at where we get to at the end of the month. All right, so raise and lower the heel. And you'll notice I have a little softness in that knee. I haven't done these in a while. 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, oh, 19, and 20. Oh, just barely 20. That one's a tough one. Okay, and my calves are a little fatigued out from the other one. So it's, it's all good. They'll get stronger. 
And so stand on the other leg and let's see how many you can get here. So I'm gonna give you a little tip. If you move your body a little bit forward, it's gonna be easier to raise your heel. If you're a dancer, these are essential. Stop at any time. 18, 19, and ugh, 20. Boy, those were tough. So if you haven't gotten to 20, you need to get to 20. And if 20 was a little hard, like for me, that was a little hard. I haven't been working on these. So uh, it doesn't take long to get these ankles in shape and more flexible. So I hope this class was helpful in finding a little bit more strength in your feet and ankles, getting your toes ungripped, letting them be long and strong. We're gonna, gonna show you some nice treats for your feet and next time. So I hope you enjoyed it. Have a blessed day. It was nice to see you. I'm Michelle Wald, physical therapist. And this class is Stand Up to Gravity from New Paradigm Wellness. See you soon.